Hello, reporter room investigators. I'm so happy that you decided to join me today. Happy holidays to each and every one of you. I hope you're enjoying a wonderful Christmas holiday season or New Year's season if you happen to be watching this after the Christmas holiday has passed. We're going to be doing part two in our series on the Jean Benet Ramsey case. If you haven't seen part one, you'll want to watch that one next. You don't have to watch these in order, in order for them to make sense, but in part one, I had a journalist from USC join me and together we went through Patsy Ramsey's bizarre 911 call on this and introduce a new theory in the case. Today, we're going to be going through the bizarre ransom note. There are a lot of things that pop out on this ransom note, and we're going to analyze it together with Roman, who is joining us. He's a graduate from USC with a bachelor's degree in journalism, and sometimes two eyes are better than one. And in this case, it is something that has stumped people for a number of years. For those of you that don't know, John Benet Ramsey was a all-American beauty queen. She was just six years old when she was reported missing the day after Christmas. She went missing on Christmas Day from her home by her mother, Patsy Ramsey, in that 911 call that we analyzed for you in part one. Today in part two, we're going to be going through the ransom note that was found, according to Patsy, she found it on the back staircase of their home. And we're going to go through the ransom note because there are some very, very odd things that jump out on the ransom note. Now, some things you may have heard before, but I think that we are going to bring to you some some new information about this ransom note to you today. So make sure that you stay with us until the end of the video. Okay, I'm back with Roman. Welcome to Reporter Room. Everything Roman and I are sharing is our opinion. Opinions are not facts. If you haven't subscribed to Reporter Room, please do like, share, and make sure you leave us a comment in the comment section below. And I'll read out to you what it says, but it says, listen carefully. We are a group of individuals that represent a small foreign faction. Okay, let's just stop there with the ransom note. Roman, it starts off with listen carefully, but it's a note. We're not listening to it. We're reading it. What do you make of that? It's, it's pretty silly. Um, I think it just demonstrates right off the bat that whoever wrote this isn't really the brightest bulb, but the law enforcement really did feel like Patsy wrote this note. And the reason they believed that was when the note was three pages long and it was handwritten on Patsy's notepad using a pen that was came from the house. And then it starts off, Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully. We are a group of individuals that represent a small foreign faction. Okay, so we are a group of individuals that represent a small foreign faction. Would, if you were a foreign faction, like some kind of a, a extremist cell, would you describe yourself as small? Yeah, it's a, it's a strange detail. Um... The size of the organization organization should be bloated uh, if, if the intent is to intimidate, to downplay the size or the scope of you know the forces that are going against them in this situation is just a weird move that I don't think any actual real organization that was able to pull something like this off overseas would would do. It just seems like a weird blunder made by an amateur pretending. And why would a foreign faction be coming over to get a ransom of $118,000, which again is such a weird amount. It just happens to be the amount that from my understanding was John Ramsey's Christmas bonus. So that was just a bonus for them. So listen carefully. We're a group of individuals that represent a small foreign faction. So I can see where law enforcement's already like putting red flags onto this ransom note. And then it says, we do respect your business, but not the country that it serves. Why even say that they respect the business? And then business is spelled with two S's. 
at the end, which is correct, but also in the middle, which is incorrect. Right. So I think that's interesting. Like maybe they were trying to purposely misspell business. I think that's a good theory. I think that is a strong possibility that he was directing her and in her state of, you know, potential hysteria or panic. She was just writing down what he was saying verbatim. Then the next part says, at this time, we have your daughter in our possession. She is safe and unharmed. And if you want to see 1997, you must follow our instructions to the letter. Okay, I don't I don't see anything wrong with those statements. What do, what about you? Anything jumping out to you on that, Roman? Mm, no, not not particularly on that one. Okay, so then it says you will withdraw one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars from your account, and I think this amount is bizarre because it's just such a not not a, I mean this family was really wealthy. They lived in a mansion. They had a plane. They were taking a flight to Georgia. I mean, some people have said they've had more than had more than one plane, but we know they at least had the one plane. So this family had money, um, big money, not just a little bit of money. So why only ask for one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars if you're a small foreign faction? The, I mean, you do have to adjust for inflation, but even then, it's it's still really a pittance compared to what they could have potentially gotten if this was a legit organization and you think the time and resources that they spent to go overseas and do something like this and try to make sure that they weren't caught the very nature i mean just the just the amount itself is just a really oddly low amount compared to what they should have asked for what they would have gotten um it just seemed it just reeks of somebody writing it that didn't really think it through to me and then it says from your account how do they know that the ramses don't just have that in their personal safe and this was written on christmas day or how do they know they could have what well, their bank was going to be open between in time for them to get the ransom yeah, that and just the just the idea that the entire thing is handwritten is just bizarre. Like just just picture this foreign agency, this this cabal of people who are gonna go overseas and do all this stuff, and then their brilliant plan to convey their intentions and instructions are to bring a pen hope that they have a notepad lying around and then just well, sit didn't. there for like 20 minutes and scribble it down. And they didn't even bring a pen. They used a pen that was in the house. Yeah. So they didn't even bring the pen with them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's, just, it's, it's really silly. Um, the entire thing. I mean, it's, it's so obviously fabricated. It, you know, people have said, Oh, well maybe it was somebody that knew John that knew what the bonus was. That's possible. But how would you know on if you're writing this on Christmas night that they would even have access to their bank account the day after Christmas? And you'll have to tell me in the comment section if banks are open on the day after Christmas or not, because I, I, I don't know. Okay, so it says $100,000 will be in $100 bills and the remaining $18,000 in $20 bills. And then it says, make sure you bring an adequate size attache to the bank when you get home you will put the money in a brown paper bag again how do they know this guy has an attache case or can get one again christmas everything's closed and the day after christmas some things are closed and then when you get home you have to put the money in a brown paper bag and then it says, I will call between, not we, it's now switched to I, I will call between 8 and 10 a.m. tomorrow to instruct you on delivery. Now, this is another thing that a lot of statement analysis, like 
have zoomed in on, which was the word tomorrow, because Patsy got the note the day after Christmas in the wee hours of the morning, according to her. So what would tomorrow have been? Would it have been the day after Christmas? Would it have been the day after that? If a small foreign faction came over to a country, don't you think they'd want to make sure that the person receiving this ransom note would understand when they were going to call them? The, uh, there's just so many weird blunders and so many things that if this was some kind of foreign power, some, you know, syndicate uh, that actually had the means to pull something like this off. There, there, there's so many precautions, so many details that they're just kind of flubbing and throwing away over their shoulder. It's, it's almost comical, if not for the, you know, the tragic nature of, you know, what led up to it. It says that then this is weird too. The delivery will be exhausting. So I advise you to be rested. Now, if you were thought somebody was going to find this ransom note on the stairs where you left it and they were going to find it in the morning when they woke up, what are they? And you're going to call them between eight and 10. When are they supposed to rest? And why would this kidnapper or this small foreign infection care at all if these people were rest well rested? It's it's weird, right? It's really honestly seems like what a, a person's view of a like a Hollywood villain would say rather than what an actual you know crime syndicate would probably would, would probably convey in a in a ransom note. I think you're right and a lot of people have made comparisons from this ransom note to the film Ransom which was really popular with it was a movie starring Mel Gibson and also to speed, which was also very popular. Mm -hmm. That was a movie starring Keona Reeves. The delivery will be exhausted, exhausting. So I advise you to be well rested. I just think that's very strange. If we monitor you getting the money early, we might call you early to arrange an earlier delivery of the money and hence an earlier pickup of your daughter. Just It's just kind of a mess really. It's just a mess of a uh, an attempt to try and mimic what they think a syndicate faction overseas would, would actually say. Any deviation of my instructions will result in an immediate execution of your daughter. Okay, but we listened to that 911 call. So why? So listen to the instructions. And it also says you will be denied her remains for a proper burial. And then it says, the two gentlemen watching over your daughter do not particularly like you, so I advise you not to provoke them. Again, it just sounds like something out of a badly written, poorly written Hollywood movie. Speaking to anyone about your situation, such as the police, FBI, will result in your daughter being beheaded. Now, we know that Patsy calls we listened to the 911 call. We know she calls 911. She didn't say anything. Please come in an unmarked car because they've said my daughter will be beheaded. She already believed, or she already knew that, in my opinion, that her daughter was dead. So there wasn't any real precaution for her to take in this regard. Um, because, yeah, it's if she were to call the police and she believed she was being monitored like this note seems to imply that would be the last thing that you want to do. And if she decided to do that, she would at least inform them of the fact that, you know, I'm taking a huge risk calling you guys and it could potentially lead to my daughter being killed because the note said that if I do contact you guys, they're going to be header. So please take that in, into consideration when you guys are going to conduct you know coming here and doing the investigation and trying to find my daughter but she didn't so it says so if they speak to and speak to anyone and they didn't just call the police they also invited all their friends over patsy had all of her friends including her church pastor come over to the house that morning because this note says two gentlemen watching over your daughter do not particularly like, like you. So I advise you not to provoke them. 
So she calls 911. She doesn't tell them to come in an unmarked car. She leaves that part about advising you not to provoke them completely out of the 911 call. And then she says, speaking to anyone, then they say, speaking to anyone about your situation, such as the police, FBI, will result in your daughter being beheaded. If we catch you talking to a stray dog, she dies. If this is where it does, really does sound like something out of speed. If you alert bank authorities, she dies. If the money is in any way marked or tampered with, she dies. You will be scanned for electronic devices. And if any are found, she dies. Okay. So that's like pretty, I mean, that's like super scary language. So again, she not only calls law enforcement, doesn't alert them that they need to come in an unmarked car, but then, and maybe that's just panic, but then she invites all of her she invites all these friends over and, and the pastor from her church and John, you know, is okay with that. The, the lack of caution and not only the lack of caution, but just the blatant recklessness is, uh, I, I think, I think it's a little more than just a minor red flag at this point. It's like a huge indicator that there's something more going on here than what this the story that that's being woven is uh is conveying i didn't even try to get the ransom together when we heard from the the police detective linda art who was in the house she describes seeing john ramsey casually sifting through his mail looking through his mail why weren't they trying to get the ransom together instead of having all their friends and pastor over you can try to deceive us, but be warned we are familiar with law enforcement countermeasures and tactics. Okay, so they spelled countermeasures and tactics correctly, but they couldn't spell business. And then it says you stand a 99% chance of killing your daughter if you try to outsmart us. Follow our instructions and you stand a 100% chance of getting her back. Now, if they believe this ransom note was real and it's only $118,000, and again, these people are wealthy, why not get that money together? There's really no reason. I mean, again, I, I think I think there's a very strong possibility that there's that this note was just made hastily and without any real thought. Um, and it, because everything that they did seems to run counter to what her, their daughter's best interests would be to, for, for her well-being. This last part of the note, it says you and your family are under constant scrutiny as well as the authorities. Okay. So again, if I read that, I would, and thought I was under constant scrutiny, I would probably try to not make the phone call from my own house because I'd be scared they were still in the house. And I would probably um, try to slip out to a neighbor's house to make this 911 call. Or if I had a cell phone in my car, I would go to my car, you know, a car phone. That's what they had back in those days, I think. Yeah, I agree. It's There's just so many weird oddities and blunders on the parents' part. Um, if this was legit, the child would have died because of their frankly stupidity and that's the other thing they've done all these interviews i've never heard these two parents have any kind of remorse for the way that they handled the ransom note i've never heard them say are you there yeah i'm here okay i've never heard them say um do you know if only we hadn't called the police she would still be here i've never heard anything like that but listen to this next part of the note, because this does sound like the movie Speed. I have seen that film. It says, don't try to grow a brain, John. Now, remember, at the beginning of the note, they're addressing John as Mr. Ramsey. But now, all of a sudden, they've switched to John. Don't try to grow a brain, John. That's right out of the Speed movie, right? You're not the only fat cat around. So don't think that killing would be difficult. Don't underestimate us, John. And then use that good Southern common sense of yours. It's up to you now, John. 
And then it, they finished it saying victory and they signed off S B T C. Now there, a uh, Brenda Robinson, that's a forensic certified document examiner. She had an interesting theory. She believed that the ransom note was written intentionally to frame John and Patsy. So that's what she thought. She thought that it was to actually frame them for this. And by writing out the note and leaving it in the house that it not only did the, whoever did this do away with their daughter, but also tried to frame them in the process. What do you think about that theory? It could be the case. Um, it's definitely an interesting theory. I don't think I believe it though, because again, if they had actually read this note prior to acting, um, even if they weren't the ones who wrote it, they still probably would have gotten their own daughter killed because of their actions. And I don't know. It it could be the case that they were just that stupid, but I just feel like it, it, it feels like a little bit of a stretch to me. And again, if you were a small foreign faction coming in, wouldn't you have your note pre-written out? Yeah, I think that's the most um, damning thing, really, is just the fact that it was written in the house. Um, it, it definitely wasn't. I'm I'm almost certain it wasn't some foreign faction. You know, it, it just nothing adds up. It could be somebody trying to frame, you know, the parents for doing it. Again, I just my my own doubts kind of creep in when the parents just handle it in the worst possible way that they could have. It to me, I think the most likely scenario is that the parents were working together to try and cover up, you know, what happened to their daughter, and they did it in a very heat of the moment, uh, spur of the moment type of situation. And they just didn't have time to think anything through. Happy holidays. And thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time. Bye.